CataractCoach.com, a tough resident case of cataract surgery in sclerokeratitis. Great job by the senior resident, but there's some helpful hints for you. Now we've got an attending surgeon starting the case here. Okay, going to do a scleral tunnel. I like the idea of a scleral tunnel. If you got anything weird going on with a cornea, avoiding a corneal incision, probably a good idea. Now marking off here, let's see the scleral tunnel. That's not too bad. That looks good. Half scleral depth of groove there. Here's the paracentesis. And a lot of heme going on here. So maybe the patient's on a blood thinner. Tripan blue dye. Setting the anterior lens capsule. Okay. Obviously, we sped the video up to at least three times normal speed here. Now, let's see the scleral tunnel continuing. So this is the attending making that scleral tunnel. And now, okay, resident going in with the keratome. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. No, you got to wiggle the technique. is better because then you want to not create a different path. But that looks good. Good incision there. Now, more viscoelastic. Let's see the Rex is going in. Now, if you want a good video of how to do a scleral tunnel, come on now. We've got cataractcoach.com. If you go to the actual website, leave YouTube for a second. Go to cataractcoach.com. In the search box, type in scleral tunnel. I've got great tutorials of teaching you how to make a beautiful, perfect scleral tunnel. You can do it. And in a case like this, I agree. Don't touch the cornea. Make a scleral tunnel. Now... Let's see the Rex. Now, the key to key, uh, using a scleral tunnel is remember, it's a little bit different angle of approach compared to a corneal incision. If you make that corneal or limbal incision there, you're a little bit different position. So on the scleral tunnel, you're a little bit further back from the limbus, obviously. And as a result, the instruments are a little flatter. So it takes a little getting used to there. But here it looks like a pretty good Rexus. Are we done with it yet? Almost. Here's the last bit of it. And luckily, it's not too dense of a cataract. It looks like a pretty strong red reflex there. There you go. Now let's see the technique. Now with this cornea blocking part of your view, for me, my preferred technique here would be to prolapse it out of the bag and uh, you know do a tilt and chop or something similar. But here we go. Let's see the hydrosecond looks okay. Wish the eye was in primary. That's the patient's fault. But hey, if you're a resident, I've got great materials for you on cataractcoach.com. A free book. It's a PDF file, just download for free, a 25-part curriculum series. This is all for you. It's all for free. It'll make you a better surgeon if you have the time and desire to be a better surgeon. Now, let's see the FACO technique here. I can see this patient's not so cooperative, Bell's you know, phenomenon there. This patient needs more IV sedation or just do a sub on block. Why suffer? So let's see the technique here. Yeah, it looks like a tilt and chop. Tilting it there, chopping the cataract, getting this thing wolfed down. Luckily, it's not too dense. So this is also a good case where an endo illuminator may make life a lot easier and give you better visualization. You saw our video a few weeks ago of the eye chopper from Oculite. That was a promoted video. We talked about a chopper that basically had an endoscopic light source on its tip. So it really made visualization inside of the eye pretty easy. So here we go. Taking out the last bit of that nucleus, and this looks pretty good. So for a senior resident, you're doing a fantastic job. I'd guess this resident has maybe two, 300 cataracts under the belt and doing a beautiful job here. And here's the cortex removal. Again, you like that red reflex. So you can also adjust your microscope lights to really emphasize the coaxial illumination. That means a light coaxial with each ocular, and that'll give a good red reflex as opposed to a paraxial light. Paraxial lights are a few degrees off from your oculars, and that gives kind of overall lighting, but it can cause reflections off the cornea, especially like this with an opaque area of the cornea. If you want to learn more about the microscope settings and lighting, guess what? Come on, cataractcoach.com. I got a whole section there about how to set up your microscope, how to do the appropriate lighting. It's all covered, I promise you. With more than 2,400 videos, it is the world's largest resource of cataract surgery instructional videos. You will love it and learn a lot. And it's free. You know what I say. If it's free, it's for me. So now let's say, look at this back to this case, removing the viscoelastic. Again, nice looking case here. Obviously, you put in a monofocal lens here. Do not put in some sort of fancy lens in this case. And so now at the end here, suturing up the skull tunnel. For a resident case, I like it, you know. This kind of tunnel should seal up on its own. But a resident learning how to do good sutures, oh, it's a good, a good technique. And now even here comes a vicro suture probably to close that conjunctiva. And this patient can have a really nice outcome here. Just don't forget to hydrate that paracentesis. 
Beautiful job here. So young resident, thank you for sending the video in, even in this odd looking format. I, oh, what's up with that hydration? Yo, yo, yo. Easy here, people. What, you're hydrating half the cornea. Here I was gonna, I was just about to give you a compliment and you're hydrating literally 50% of the cornea. Patient's gonna have terrible vision the next day. You gotta watch some cataract coach videos. We don't wait, oh my God, with the hydration. We don't do that. Good job. I appreciate the effort. Check out cataractcoach.com.